Many of us have fond memories of our junior achievement experiences. Well, junior achievement is alive and well in San Mateo County. Find out why when we come back. In January, it's so nice. Hi, I'm Bruce Grantham and welcome to Our Children, Our Future, a program about education in the South San Francisco Unified School District. It seems like junior achievement has been in the schools forever, promoting business education and giving students a taste of what business is like in the real world. I had a chance to learn what achievement is doing with schools in the 21st century in a brief interview last week. Let's take a look at that now. Good evening. I'm here with Deanna Cavanaugh-Jones, Program Manager for Junior Achievement in San Mateo County. Deanna, thank you for having a conversation with me this afternoon. Of course, thank you. Deanna, let's, let's talk about Junior Achievement. I think everybody in, our, in our, our viewing audience probably has some idea what Junior Achievement's all about. Either they participated when they were in school or they know something about it. Uh, tell us a little bit about Junior Achievement. Where did it come from? How did it start? Okay. Well, Junior Achievement... Um our mission is just to give you an overview about what the organization is all about is to really bring community members into the classroom to work with students and help them um, learn about possibi possibilities for their future and start to gain the skills that are going to help them be successful. And it started way back when in 1919 by a man named Horace Moses um, and a group of businessmen um, in Springfield, Massachusetts, who wanted to kind of have students be prepared for the workforce. And they started um, just in kind of small after-school groups where they'd work with students. And then it built from there to really establish a program where students were at a young age in high school starting their own companies. And they did that led by a volunteer, um, again, in an after-school setting where they'd really kind of learn what it takes to, to start their own companies. So it started back east. Mm -hmm. And... So it's a, it's, uh, it's a national movement, national organization. When did it, uh, Junior Achievement start in California? Um, you know, I actually don't know the exact date when it started in California. It has, however, it's spread n nationwide and has been around in California for quite some time. And then just recently in July, um, merged to be a worldwide organization. So now Junior Achievement is not only all throughout the United States, but now has merged and is in um, 90 other countries. What's the Junior Achievement organization itself look like? What's the structure of Junior Achievement? Mm -hmm. Well, Junior Achievement has its uh, has its worldwide headquarters in Colorado Springs, Colorado, um, and within that they have a variety of different you know different offices throughout now the nation and now the world. Um, within the office, there's kind of two different components of people who work um, within a Junior Achievement office. You have kind of the program side and the education side, and then you have the development side and the fundraising inside. And that's true with your office in San Mateo mm -hmm. County? Yes, exactly. That really runs true for, for most of the offices with Junior Achievement is you have kind of these two components, one raising funds to deliver the educational programs, which um, the program managers on the other side do. When you're talking about raising funds to deliver the programs, what do, what do these funds do? Mm -hmm. um, well, the money that Junior Achievement raises through their events and corporate contributions and grants that are written within the office. And what kind of events? We were talking the other day about what some of those events are. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think people are, are aware that Junior Achievement runs fundraising events during the year. What kind of Constantly. events? Constantly. Um, we run events all throughout the year. We have everything from um, our wine auction, which happens in the spring, our golf classic, which is at Blackhawk um, Golf Course in Danville. Impressive. Yes, it's a very nice event. Um, and then we, in the fall, we have our polo in the wine country event where we kind of bring people up to Napa and they get to experience what the wine country up there looks like. Um, throughout the year, we do bullathons, which is a huge fundraiser for Junior Achievement, where we kind of have different people um, sponsor bullathons. So we have a large bankers bullathon or um, district bullathons, where San Mateo County will have their own bullathon, and that's a large fundraiser for Junior Achievement. As well as later in the spring, we also have our um, ice cream in the park, which is really the the event that kind of brings 
together the community of people that we often work with, students and parents, um, and that's at the Chabot Space and Science Center. What's the role of volunteers in junior achievement? Because I know that's kind of the crux of, mm -hmm. of what, what goes out to the schools. Um, volunteers are truly the backbone of junior achievement. They kind of make the whole program happen. Um, when somebody decides to be a volunteer for junior achievement, they have a variety of options that they can get involved with, and those usually depend on what grade they're interested in working with, if they're elementary, middle, or high school. Um, depending on where they decide to go, it changes the um, the commitment. So our elementary school programs can be delivered in a day or they can be delivered over a period of five weeks where the volunteer is visiting the classroom once a week for about 30 to 45 minutes. Mm -hmm. In middle and high school they visit again once a week but those programs last about eight weeks. Talk about the the traditional junior achievement model and then the shift that that model is made into the elementary schools with a little different model. Mm -hmm. Well, when Junior Achievement, again, was first started, they really had the company program being their focus. Um, as things shifted, the feedback was, let's work with younger and younger students, and they created an in-classroom model. Um, with elementary school programs, they really created a program where they brought educators in, got a lot of feedback, and created this curriculum that, um, one, works very well with California state standards, particularly reinforcing the social studies standards. So that's really where Junior Achievement focuses. Um, but it does have a lot of kind of reading and math emphasis as well, with, of course, the business bent, where Junior Achievement is really starting to you know, prepare students for what they're going to do with their future. And in my understanding of the Junior Achievement volunteer program in elementary schools is, is these volunteers will come in and do class is kindergarten all the way through fifth grade. Mm -hmm. what, can you, what can you teach kindergarten kids about business? Exactly. Um, you know, like, um, like you just said, it does look very different to teach you know, an 18-year-old about economics than to teach a five-year-old about economics. Well, what our curriculum in elementary school does is it really just kind of starts to plant the seed about saving money, about mm -hmm. um, you know, if you wanted to your own, there's a little story that they read to the kindergarten students, and then each story follows up with an activity. So one story will be about a little girl wanting to um, sell bookmarks at her school fair. So that would kind of start the idea of what that looks like and then saving money in order to do that and when you gain money um, from whatever you sell, what you end up you know, buying your, on your own. Tell us a little bit about then uh, what schools you're in in South City. Okay. In South San Francisco, we're working with a variety of elementary schools. Um, we have partnerships with Los Cerritos, Spruce, Sunshine Gardens, Martin Elementary, um, Burry Burry, and Hillside. Ponderosa as well. And who are some of those corporate uh, volunteers? Um, throughout San, South San Francisco, Genentech provides a lot of volunteers mm -hmm. for us. Walmart.com as well. AAA just worked with Hillside Elementary School. Um, Cell Genesis is also a big, a big sponsorship of our volunteers. Uh, and I understand that you're going to do the more traditional model with El Camino High School this spring. Mm -hmm, definitely. Both El Camino and South San Francisco, we're just starting our company program. Um, again, going back to some of the more traditional roots of junior achievement. And Genentech at El Camino is um, helping bring in volunteers for four economics classes that in the spring are going to be running the company program. As well as South San Francisco, we have a volunteer who's going to help do that program. So there. in that traditional model, what we're all familiar with, when I was in school, they're going to uh, develop a product. Yeah. They're gonna, they're gonna, you know, their own innovative ideas are gonna decide what product they want to sell, um, sell stock to gain some revenue, mm -hmm. be able to buy their product, um, hopefully be successful in whatever their business is, and then they bring the, you know, the company all the way from start to at the end liquidation. So they kind of see all the steps of what it takes. I remember I bought stock in a junior achievement program at some high school years ago. And I got a dividend check at the end of the year for 78 cents. Yeah, it's not a big shock. I mean, <laughs> hopefully we hope that all of these um, companies are very successful, but you always run a risk. If there's a, an organization or a company out there that's watching tonight and wants mm -hmm. to get involved with Junior Achievement as a volunteer in schools, uh, who should they contact? Mm -hmm. Well, we have different districts all throughout the Bay Area, and we work everywhere from all the way up to Ukiah, all throughout the East Bay to down to East Palo Alto. Um, so any company can get involved all throughout that territory. They just need to get in contact with our offices in South San Francisco and we'll make sure whether you're an individual volunteer, a company, um, or even a school who'd like to see our program come, um, we'll make it happen. And folks are going to take a look at that slide right now. Great. Thank you. Deanna, thank you very much for coming on with me and good luck with Junior Achievement. You've been around for a long time and I imagine you're going to be around for many, many years to come. I hope to. Thank you very much. Thanks. So you can see that Junior Achievement is alive and well in San Mateo County and still doing the wonderful things that they've done before. And uh, I tried to figure out what that 78 cent dividend check would be worth today and probably spend it so quickly it doesn't even matter to, to even 
Think about it. But at any rate, we're going to take a short break, and when we come back, we're going to talk with a classroom teacher and two junior achievement volunteers from Los Aritas Elementary School in South San Francisco. Don't go away. Prudential California Realty is pleased to support the South San Francisco Unified School District. With several offices located throughout the South Bay, we help home buyers realize their dreams of ownership and sellers maximize their home investment. Prudential California Realty is a longtime partner with education, having created the Education Foundation in 1992, which provides grants to teachers throughout Northern California. Prudential California Realty, your partner in real estate. You've always been like a son to me, Mikey. And that's why I find it unfortunate that we're in this little situation here. Peninsula TV, how will it affect you? Welcome back. With me is Ann Ellis, third grade teacher at Los Ritas Elementary School, and junior achievement volunteers Richard Garbarino, South San Francisco City Council member, and Matt Hernan, volunteer uh, employee with Cell Genesis. Welcome to all three of you. Thanks for joining me this evening. Thank, Thank you. Thanks, Bruce. Matt. How did you get involved with uh, the Junior Achievement Program at Los Cerritos? Uh, Helen Dale, who's a, a community relations at Cell Genesis, uh, sent out an email and asked for some volunteers for this program. And uh, I thought about it and it didn't take very long. And I just said, you know, I'd love to do it. Um, my stepmother has been a teacher for close to 20, 25 years. And I said, you know, it's time for me to give it a shot kind of give back to the community. So I thought this was probably the best way to do it. What did you expect going into a fourth grade class? You're not uh, a trained teacher. No, I'm not. But uh, a lot of my friends have kids. So I, I think it was, you know, I was used to it. Uh, a lot of young kids. And uh, I looked forward to their energy and, you know, teaching economics uh, and things like human resources and capital resources, I thought would be challenging. But uh, it wasn't. Uh, the kids helped, actually, because they have a lot of questions. So it was a lot of fun. Richard, how about you? How did you get involved? Yes, well, same with me. Uh, Helen Dale sent an email to me uh, saying that there was a shortage of volunteers for junior achievement, and would I, as an elected official, be interested? And, of course, I thought about it for about 30 seconds and said, absolutely, and emailed her back and said, when do I start? Where do I go? Uh, so. what, did, what did you expect going into a third grade class? Well, having six grandchildren of various uh. ages, uh, I thought, well, this should be interesting. Hmm, I think I can handle this. And it turns out it was interesting, and I did. I think I did handle it okay. Excellent. Uh, how often do, do both of you go into the classrooms, and, and what do you do? What's, what's it look like for you when you go in the classrooms, Matt? Um, I, I took a uh, half hour uh, each week and spread it over five weeks. Uh, gave the uh, kids something definitely to look forward to, uh, and it worked with my schedule. I, you know, I took it during my lunch hour, and... Uh, you know, after about five weeks, it went by so quick. The half hour went by so quick. Uh, I, I decided to sneak in a couple extra uh, classes. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. it was so fun. A volunteer above and beyond. Yeah. Richard, exactly. how about you? How often do you? Are you I would go in once a week uh, for 45 minutes for again five weeks, and I wish it could have gone on all semester, but we were just limited to the five weeks. And I, I truly looked forward to that Tuesday morning mm -hmm. with the children. What do you think of the the junior achievement curriculum, Matt? Um, at first, I thought, you know, how do I teach uh, kids <laughs> about uh, finances and uh, entrepreneur and, and business uh, when sometimes I even have trouble myself? But uh, <laughs> it worked out. Uh, it, the curriculum is it's nice. It's nice and organized, and they give you, uh, you know, plenty of information to help teach the class. Richard? Well, I thought it was very well done curriculum, uh, a very well done curriculum. And I, again, I had some, a little 
trepidation about how am I going to get this over to third graders, but actually as I got into it, it, it turned out to be done quite easily and they grasped it right away and it was very interesting to them. They've done a good, whoever's developed the curriculum has done a really good job of developing the curriculum and yeah. it had to be teachers that were doing it because it's got all the activity that keeps the kids engaged because I've taught the curriculum myself as a volunteer and it's, you know, it's really neat. And you have worked with Richard now for two years. Mm -hmm. uh, what does a volunteer bring to the classroom that the classroom, the regular classroom teacher doesn't bring or can't bring? Well, um, I have to say Richard is a natural. He came in with ease, and it's always good to see him, and I hope he comes back again. And what We can always use substitute teachers in a school district. <laughs> I'm ready and willing. Absolutely. And uh, what they bring is um, their own expertise in their professions, whether it be councilmen or um, biotechnicians. We've had scientists. We've had lawyers. We've had architects, mechanics. We have many different volunteers, so they bring that experience as well as their personal experience as parents, grandparents. Um, so it's more than just experience. bringing in the junior achievement curriculum. They're bringing themselves into the classroom and, and the students are, are getting a, another look at the real world through somebody else's Absolutely. eyes rather than the teacher who yes. can tell them and show them and so forth. But, mm -hmm. but you're there every day and they tend to take you for granted yes. sometimes, but when you know somebody new comes in, it's a new experience for them and maybe they're a little bit more receptive sometimes. Absolutely. Yeah. They love it. They look forward to it every time. Excellent. Yes. Now, you, you both are in year two as volunteers. What keeps you coming back, Richard? The children. Uh, they are so great to work with. Of course, Mrs. Ellis is, is great to work with as well. But the, 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 the kids are so attentive. They're so interested in what you have to say. And they ask some very good questions for third graders. Mm -hmm. uh, and it, that, imp that impressed me, that at this young age, some of the questions that they would ask and, and some of the, what we were teaching them they seem to grasp it very quickly, and I, I feel very good that these youngsters are going to do well in their careers, in their lives. They're, they're getting a good basic education, and they're, go they're going to do very well for themselves. You know, Matt, you and I were talking, and, and you brought up something about uh, really what it does for you being right. into the classroom, you know, right. what it's done for you, not so much what you're doing for them, but what it's done for you. Yeah, I... Um, I um, with with the kids, like I said, they have to definitely have an influence on me. Uh, but I think when it when it's going to come to things like ballot measures and voting and stuff like that, it's it's definitely going to change the way I think about, you know, certain politics and especially when it involves schools and, and kids. And um, I'm definitely it's you know I'm here to make a difference not only for the kids but hopefully the whole community you know later on. And what kind of feedback do, do you and the other teachers get from the students about their experience with the Junior Achievement Volunteers? Well, I think it's pretty unanimous. Everybody agrees that we love the program. The kids are always excited to see the volunteers. Um, and the best way I could tell you is just to read you a letter that one of my students wrote to Mr. Garbarino. You have they a called him, binder full. I have a binder, which he will receive today. And they did address him as Mr. G because Garbarino was it's kind a of a hard, mouthful. Hard yeah. So it begins, Dear Mr. Garbarino, thank you for coming for the past five weeks. It was really fun. My favorite th thing was when you were here with the checks. I always see my mom sign them. It looks really fun. <laughs> I hope you can come to my um, class when I'm in the fourth grade. You are really fun to be with. You are a really good teacher. Why aren't you a teacher? <laughs> we really appreciate you coming to our class. Thank That's you. pretty nice. Uh, yes. We have time. Why don't you, do you have another one? Absolutely. Yes. Okay. Dear Mr. Garbarino, I really appreciate you coming and teaching us what a city planner does, talking about zones, newspapers, checks, and all kinds of things. The best thing was when you were teaching uh, that we got to write checks, check <laughs> registers, and deposit tickets. I'm not sure what that was. But thank you for coming in and teaching us. As a junior achievement teacher, you are a real citizen. <laughs> Your, your students write very well. Don't they? You must yes. be doing a wonderful oh, job thank you. also. Thank but you. they do. They write very, yeah, very well. Very sincere. That's, mm -hmm. a, that's a nice it's thing to wonderful. have, Richard. Yes. Yeah, uh, Matt, uh, when we were talking earlier, you had one of those kids say the darndest things kind of moment in the classroom yeah. that I'm the kind of thing that Ann gets all of the time. Oh, yeah. But yeah, it's. Um, I was asking the, all the kids what they'd like to do if they had their own business. And, you know, um, one, one, one little boy asked, said he'd like to have a club, and I asked him what type of club, and he, he told me nightclub. Um, it's a little bit cleaned up, but uh, I was pretty surprised and a little speechless, but uh, they definitely um, have a little influence from TV there, I could, I could see, and maybe some older uh, siblings, but uh, it, it was pretty funny that he just threw out nightclub, and 
I don't know where a where fourth grader would get that from. I'd figure maybe a pizza place or something like that, but mm -hmm. uh, they definitely know what's going on out there. Now, your volunteer time is both up f for the school year, Yes. right? I mean, you're not planning to come into the classroom anymore, but... Uh, what about next year? Year three's coming up. Or I'll, you come back I'll, next year? Oh, definitely, definitely. There's, there's no doubt about it. I'll, I'll be back next year. I'll be looking forward to it. Richard, how oh, about you? Absolutely, absolutely. I'm hoping to come back to Mrs. Ellis' third grade class. And I'd love to have him come back. Please I, do. Yes. That's thank a wonderful you. way to end this segment. Yeah. Thank, thank you all, all very much. Thank, thank you. Wonderful thank you. program, and, and obviously you're really enjoying your experience there, and mm -hmm. the students really benefit. Mm -hmm. I think that's great. All right. Thank, thank you. Really you. Really appreciate it. In our spotlight tonight is a local TV newscaster who took her turn at being a school principal for a day. Stay with us and take a look at this one. If you live on the peninsula, there's only one place to get the latest news on business, sports, politics, education, and your community. Peninsula TV. Channel 26, the Peninsula and South Bay's Emmy Award-winning programming resource. For more information or for a programming schedule, go to pentv.tv or call us at 650-637-1936. Peninsula TV, your community programming channel. Real Estate with Bobby Decker is for anyone who owns a home or aspires to do so. Everything that is important to or an interesting facet of home ownership will be covered by our program. Please join us. You won't want to miss Real Estate with me, your host, Bobby Decker. Emmy Award winning Peninsula TV provides a large multifunctional TV studio and video production facility, state of the art equipment, and affordable prices. Let our professional staff and crew produce your company or organization's next video, or create your own TV series and air it on one of the Bay Area's largest community cable channels. Contact Peninsula TV at pentv.tv or call 650 637 1936. Welcome back. We all have our memories of a particular school principal. Well, Susan Blake, morning news anchor with KRON Channel 4 News, visited Parkway Heights Middle School recently as principal for a day. South San Francisco high school students Edwin Serrano and Jose Rodriguez were there to capture her day on tape. <laughs> We have here today Principal Hoagland and Susan Blake. Being principal at Parkway Heights Middle School is a tough task and it requires a lot of time and patience. On the other hand, Susan Blake, who is the morning news anchor for Cron TV's Channel 4 News, also has a stressful job. She graduated from the University of Kansas in journalism, came to California in 1980 and became the anchor for Sacramento Cron TV in the 1980s. She got up at 3 a.m. every morning to be at work by 5.30 to do the 7 a.m. newscast. Here are a few words with Susan Blake. So, so I'm just going to talk a little bit, and then we can open it up for questions. And uh, that way, if you have specific questions about things, it'll give you an opportunity maybe to find out something a little bit more. Um, I do consider myself a journalist. My major was in journalism at the University of Kansas, and I've kind of lived in a lot of different you know, areas of the country. But I've been here in San Francisco since 1990. So, um, so if you are, number one, well-read, you know, that you read a lot, whether it is books that you're interested in, whether it's a newspaper, and also write, get your writing skills down. You know, for journalism, you don't have to be a great creative writer. I don't think I could ever write a piece of fiction at all. I don't think I'm a good creative writer, but I am a good basic writer in terms of passing along the information and being able to explain to people you know, what the facts are and how did the story happen and those sorts of things. The easiest way, I think, to begin reading the newspaper, and I think it's a, it's a habit that I started a long time ago, someone shared it with me, and I just kept up with it, is I try to read 
on the front page of the newspaper every day at least the first three paragraphs of every story. And in the first three paragraphs of that story, it's going to give you the basic information of what the headline is about. If I thought extra time, then I'll, and sometimes I get really wrapped up in the story, and it's like such an interesting story. That's what I want to know about. You know, I'll find that I read a lot more. The same thing if you're reading a Newsweek or a Time magazine, if you're flipping through that. Um, I think it's also um, important just to read the first few paragraphs. I think it's a really good habit to get in. I think as you go through life, you'll really begin to understand that um, having an information about just basic knowledge of what's going on in our world and how, and you make the choices then, how are you going to participate? After the assembly, we had a few words with the principal and Susan Blake regarding their thoughts about the principal for a day event. So um, what would you think about uh, the program, the principal for a day? I think it's really great. It's nice to have people from the community or from the business world or from today, you know, somebody from broadcast world come to school and see what it's like to be in education. It's a, it's a different lifestyle, a different kind of job for people who are not used to being around kids or teachers or, or schools outside of their own school experience. Hi, I'm Jose Rodriguez with Our Children, Our Future. We are here today at Parker Heights Middle School where a Cron 4 Television's Susan Blake gets to be principal for a day. <laughs> How did I do? Did I flunk principal for a day? No, you didn't. <laughs> I didn't, okay. <laughs> um, what did you think about this program, about you being principal for a day? I think it's great. I think um, certainly for me personally, it was wonderful to be, I mean, I, I work with a, a group of uh, kids from 11 on in the city of San Francisco, but to be honest with you, I haven't been back in a school um, at this age level in a very long time. So I think walking around from classroom to classroom and then being with some of the students, not only in the classroom, but out on the grounds, you know, over the lunch hour, and then in the little assembly that we did, really kind of gave me a different perspective, you know, being in that environment where I, I was in the children's environment as opposed to me meeting with them, you know, in a smaller group or one-on-one -on -one outside of a school. So if you had a chance to do this all over again, would you? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. I might next time, if I was invited back, I might be a little tougher. Uh, but I was just learning the ropes today. Okay. <laughs> all right. Thank you for your time, Mrs. Nice Blake. to meet Thanks. you. You did a great job. Right, you got a great future. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you enjoyed that segment produced by South San Francisco High School students Edwin Serrano and Jose Rodriguez. The message tonight has been about volunteerism and participating in your schools. It's extremely important for adults to, to be visible in local schools. It's also very important for students to see very successful people, successful adults in their community as they come back and talk about what it is they do in the real world. The message that Susan Blake was giving was just that kind of message, an excellent message. I hope you enjoyed tonight's show. I'm Bruce Grantham for Our Children, Our Future. See you next time.